What's up guys, this is Valentina with Bigger Creations and today we're talking about four ways to get better bass in your productions. Okay, the first thing you need to decide in order to get better bass for your song is whether your bass is going to be the star of the song. Now typically there are two elements that are the star of the song and that changes based off of the song and what you're trying to accomplish. Sometimes it's the melody and the drums, other times it's the vocal and the melody, other times it's the vocals and the drums, other times it's the bass and the vocals. So there are a million different combinations of what kind of things should be the most upfront and memorable things of your song. And those things are typically the stars, the stars of your song. So the first thing you need to decide is whether your bass line in this song or any of your bass sounds are going to be a star in this song. This will help you with a lot of different choices that you need to make the type of sound you need to use, the way you process it, and also the way you actually compose it and arrange it within your song. So if it's a melodic song where you just need some bass for your beat to sit on, and you just need that sub sound underneath, kind of tucked in under the instruments, then that's the role that your bass needs to play in that song. But if it's a hard trap beat where the 808 and the drums are the biggest thing about this song, then you want to make sure that the bass is in your face. So the first and most important step about getting better bass in your songs is deciding what role your bass is going to play in your song. Is it a star or is it just accompanying everything? And that will help you make all the other decisions that you need to make. The second thing that will help you get better bass in all of your songs is to check your frequencies. Now here are a couple of tips that I recommend in order to make sure that your bass stands out, especially in these small devices like your phone or a Bluetooth speaker or AirPods. All these small speakers that don't have a lot of low frequency bass response, you're going to want to make sure that you mess with your frequencies so that those frequencies come through and those sounds come through even on a phone which is where most people are listening to their music. Let me show you a couple of things that will actually help you when it comes to getting your frequencies right with your bass. Okay, so we've got a beat here. I'm just gonna play it through so you get an idea of what we're working with. And then I'll show you exactly the, some of the things that you can do to make sure your bass hits the right frequencies. To get those right frequencies, the first thing you want to do is you can easily just pull up an EQ. So we pull up a standard EQ and you'll notice here that there is a tab called processing. If you go in here, you can actually process just the left side, just the right side, just the mid information and just the side information. What I like to do in here is actually go to the side only information. So basically what we're doing here is only processing things that are on the side. So if that's the case, what we want to do is actually boost some of the higher frequencies in the side information. So one thing that I like to do here is actually do a low cut filter. So that way, basically, there isn't any stereo information happening in the very lower part of the frequency range, because we want that part of the bass to really be mono and right in the center. Um, so we don't want it in the side. So we're going to cut it out of the side and then we can actually use some of this uh, mid EQ to uh, bump up those frequencies here. Here's the cool thing about this. If I were to send a bus uh, out with some distortion, let's just go distortion, uh, just stock distortion here. Let's put nasty distortion medium. So it's pretty heavy. Um, let's listen to what that sounds like here in the send. So here we're adding distortion to the entire bass sound. But what we can do is actually take this EQ that we just created uh, with the side only information and put it here on this bus. So now this distortion is actually being processed through this EQ. Basically, what we're doing is boosting these higher frequencies with the distortion and not putting the not introducing the distortion to the lower frequencies so that that way it does come through on like a cell phone or AirPods, stuff like that. So let's take a listen.
you can get super technical with this and really understand like what part of the frequency range it is, but just use your ears. Export it out to your phone, listen to it, and if it's hitting the spot on the phone, then you're probably gonna be okay. The last thing that I wanna share here is actually saturation. So I'm gonna pull up one of my favorite saturation plugins, which is Saturn 2 by FabFilter. And what I'm gonna do here is actually create a band just around here and introduce some saturation to this higher end. And what that's gonna do is saturation is basically adding harmonics. If we boost this part of it a little bit and keep the bass really good, it's gonna help it come through on these smaller speakers. So let's take a listen before. Understanding your frequencies and getting them in the right place for your bass is super important in order to allow your bass to really play its role in your production. Tip number three, and this one is probably the most obvious, I, I hope so, I hope you guys are doing this already, but basically layering different types of bass sounds. We see this especially in like electronic music and it seems more logical in electronic music for some reason. In electronic music, you're used to hearing a very low sub bass and then a more like higher normal bass sound. Um, and the purpose of that is just to layer the bass sounds to take care of all the frequency ranges and really fill out the frequency. Sometimes you find a sample for bass that maybe has a certain quality to it that you really like, but leaves you kind of wanting more, or you have a need to have something that's a little bit more crunchy or crispier on the top, or maybe it doesn't have enough sub in it. So you're going to need a deeper, uh, a deeper sounding bass sound to put underneath it. So layering these sounds can make a huge difference. So I'm going to show you an example of what this might look like if you're selecting your bass sounds and trying to figure out what might work well together. So here in this one, we've got the simple 808. So what I've done is I've actually pulled up a new sound bank that came out today for Black Friday. It's from Slate Digital and a part of their Anna 2 Ultra Bundle, and it's included in their All Access Pass, where basically for a low monthly price, you get over 75 pro plugins, including Anna 2, and they add new plugins and sound banks all the time. If you haven't heard of them, check them out. I'm going to put a link to their website in the description. But today for Black Friday, they're actually releasing Ultra Monolith, which is basically a bunch of hefty bass synths that are just awesome and modern and totally suitable for today's productions. Um, so I'm checking out some of their sounds and... This is where it becomes really critical. You want to make sure that you're picking sounds that have different qualities. So I'm going to show you the one I picked here, but then I'll also show you some of the other sounds here um, and how you might want to use them to layer them on top of whatever production you're using. So here I've got the sound up for Bear Slayer, and this is what it sounds like by itself. So what I've done here is I've actually pulled up an EQ for the standard 808 that I had here, the first sound, and then an EQ for monolith synth from Slate Digital. So uh, just take a look at the frequencies here and see what's happening. This is basically just analyzing what frequencies are coming through on these sounds. And this can kind of help you get a perspective if you're not just using your ears to say, ooh, does, is this going to work? Or what kind of changes do I need to make to these sounds so that they play nice together? Right now, we're still just playing the Bear Slayer sound, but uh, take a look at the EQs as they're playing back so that you can see how they're different. So you'll see that we have way more information happening up here in the 2K range. When we look at the standard 808 sample, we don't have any information happening past 2K.
And even comparing these after 1K, you see a significant difference in how much sound is coming through in these frequencies. So this is a good indicator, um, you know, besides using your ears and just saying, hey, this has a quality of the sound that I'm looking for. This helps you to get an idea of where where in the frequencies the sounds that you're looking for are. So if I were just looking at this 1808, I'd say, hey, I'm going to be looking for a sound that I can use to fill up more frequency range up here um, and get more of that quality of sound. Uh, if we actually layer these together, let me show you what they sound like. And what I do is I just kind of adjust the volume to taste. <laughs> So in this case, I've toned it out quite a bit and you might say, hey, it's so tucked in there. Can you even notice that that sound is there? And I will tell you, if I turn it off, you will notice that it's gone. It's giving you that extra little crunch in the higher frequencies. And it's totally worth it. Now that you understand the importance of layering sounds, let's take a look at some of the new sounds in this pack because there are so many different sounds. Uh, you can kind of get an idea of how using various bass sounds that are completely different and putting them together can be very complimentary. Um, so let's take a listen to some of these on their own. That one's really cool. It's very atmospheric. I really like that one. Totally a different vibe. Literally, we're playing the same exact bass line, but adding a sound that just sits differently in the frequency range can really make a difference in giving your bass a little bit more strength and presence within the mix. Let's look at a few other sounds. I really like this Lambo one. It almost sounds like strings, like a big, like deep string pluck. Um, and it's a really good accent to this. And here's the thing, you can layer different ones during different parts of the song. So some of, some of these combinations might be really helpful in the verse and some of them might be really helpful in the chorus or in the bridge. Explore different sounds, layer them together. Don't just stick to one 808 or one bass sound because sometimes you could be missing out on a lot more potential for your bass to have a better presence in your production and also for your production to feel more complete. Okay, last tip about making your basses sound better in your songs. Just because your bass line is a certain way in the verse does not mean that melodically that bass line needs to be exactly the same throughout the entire song. When I have a very busy chorus melodically, then I actually tone down my bass, unless the bass is the star of the song, which in most scenarios, the bass is not the star of the song. So speaking to that scenario, if you have a really busy chorus when it comes to your melody and your, your main vocals and drums, and there's a lot of things going on in your chorus, then it's probably a good idea to make your bass more in the background and have less notes have happening in that melody in that bass line. If your verse is actually a little bit more chill and maybe only your vocal is really the star of that part, then maybe there's more space for your bass line to be a little bit more complex and add a lot more of those in-between notes or bass sweeps, things like that. So think about where in your song you're placing your bass and don't feel like it needs to be exactly the same throughout the entire song switch it up and it will actually make your compositions a lot more interesting and just cooler. 
So there you have it, guys. Those are four tips to get better bass in your productions. Uh, if you want to check out Slate Digital, they have awesome sounds. Ultra Monolith comes out today for Black Friday. So check it out in the description. I'm going to put a link there. So if you like some of the sounds that you heard here in the synthesizer I was using from Slate Digital, check it out. It's included in what's called the All Access Membership Pass. So check it out in the description. I'll put a link to it and uh, let me know if you guys like it. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future videos. And as always, if you have any questions or want to see more content, check me out on Instagram or TikTok. Keep making beats.